Yeah, I guess we're live. I was getting like crazy tired before I go live. I don't know why. I see there's a bunch of people in the chat already. Anonymous watch guy, brave sailor. Uh, Minneapolitan ginger down under, under Matthew Lockwood. Rock the watch, Matt Maddock. Greg Wood is here, Tennessee Mike, Dane Sleeping Driver's here, Nate Dog, Todd, Tim's here, Floridian's here, Beach Life is here. Bean Boy's checking in, everyone's kind of rolling in. Jeffrey's here, YZ80. YZ Luxury, YZ80 does, oh, you know what, I need to move the microphone around. You guys probably can't hear me very good. I forgot, I wasn't really ready. That's probably better. You might be able to hear me better now. YZ80 uh, does like one of the best, um, uh, what do you call it, impersonations of Archie Luxury. Does a great job of it. The Watchdog, checking in from Detroit. The Watchdog is in the Detroit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Todd's here. David Williams is here. Anyone old enough to have watched Romper Room? The name call out reminds me of that. I have not heard that. Josh, Josh checking in from Chicago. I'll be down in Chicago. What are we in June? In, in July for the wind up thing. Um, let's see here. Michael's checking in from Illinois. Clay's checking in from San Antonio. I got to find my rhythm here. I got to find like some energy. I, I actually opened up a Coke even. YZ80 says he remembers Gumby and Pokey. That's a, it's a kind of a little old. Is Gumby and Pokey still around? I'm, I'm assuming they are. They're just clay figures. Tim says he thinks uh, quite a few people are going to end up in uh, the Chicago windup. That'll be pretty cool. Celine Driver says, uh, too bad Rob doesn't feature many Zelos. My talents are wasted. I have two Zelos on the table, and we're going to talk about Zelos. And we're going to share the screen and look at their website because the Zelos website does something that I really appreciate. We can actually, let's see if I can figure this out right now. And we'll just start talking about it. I think it's this one. So if we look at the Zelos website, this is, so first of all, this is a watch that I was looking at. Uh, I I actually want to buy this watch, but I I can't say that I, that I can't afford it because like I was just at Palmer's Jewelry, Jewelry in um, Kokomo, Indiana. They had a great event uh, with Kokomo Watch Company doing watches, whiskey, and wheels. It was a great event, and I'll, I'm going to post up a video soon on that. But um, I bought two watches there. I, I bought a um, – actually, I'm wearing it. I bought um, this watch, a G-Shock. Just – I mean, G-Shocks don't count, right? So I bought a like a $200 G-Shock, 2100 and we'll talk more about the 2100s in a moment. And then I pre-ordered another, um, I think, Mudman. So, but this Zelos, I've actually been lusting after, this titanium 44 millimeter hammerhead with the bracelet and a meteorite dial. Somehow this one's not sold out. Everyone kind of went for, uh, if you look at what's sold out, Actually, if we go shop Hammerhead and you look, you can still get the blue one, the meteorite, and the red one. Uh, and actually, even on the red one, it says eight pieces remaining. This um, kind of light blue flat dial colored is sold out already. That one's sold out. And then all of these so sold out. The orange, the mosaic. And then the Damascus, those all sold out. 
Looks like you can get the vintage black still. So the cool thing that Zelos does, just real quick before I forget, is you can go, so they, they kind of archive. So you can go down to discontinued models and you can look at the old models that they've produced that are gone, sold out and discontinued, right? And now I've owned a couple of these and I sold them or gave them away or whatever. And that's kind of the topic I wanna to talk about today are some of these affordable watches, these brands or watches that are affordable. So around the $500 price point is how I'm defining affordable. But yet they're kind of rare. They're either rare because they're no longer in production. There's many reasons why they could be rare. They're, they're rare because maybe it's like a brand like Zelos or there's some other brands out there. Then when they do a drop of that model, they sell out very rapid. So it's rare slash just difficult to find, just difficult to even get even on the drop. So if you look, because I think I still have two Zelos watches that are on this list. Well, maybe not in there, but they're in the... Um, so if you go to... Yeah, they're not on there. They're definitely in the discontinued list. And there's just some great looking watches. So I, the main thing I love about this website is the Zelos had the foresight to archive it on their website. And they've put out a lot of watches. So this takes up a lot of space you know, in their uh, website creation or whatever. But I think it's valuable to the people that are collecting Zelos or looking for Zelos so they can kind of see maybe, I don't know if it has the information when it was released, but they can see the original specs on it. They can uh, have this as a data source to uh, figure out, or, or, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're new getting into watches, right? And you just discovered Zelos because of Dane and, and his massive Zelos collection. And you're like, okay, what's this Zelos about? And you go to their website and you're like, holy cow, they've been crushing it for a long time. They have some great models. And you might say you find the Swordfish Bronze with the ETA movement in it. And it was only $8.49 when it came out. And you look it up and you're like, all right, I, I, I'm on the hunt now. I want to find that. So um, it's just cool that you have this as a resource. Because a lot of websites, and I'll show you some, after a model is gone, sold out, discontinued, whatever the case, and they still do a lot of bronze watches, uh, it's not on their website anymore. So you don't even know what you don't know. It's just gone. So I think it's very cool that they did this. Okay, so let's go back to the shop. What other Zelos can we buy? Can we buy a Mako? Yeah, uh, nope, sold out, sold out. So there's discontinued, which is what we were looking at, and then there's sold out. That's a funky looking dial. I never, the mosaic. They're doing a lot of those in mosaic. So all the Makos are sold out too. And how about the black tips? Yep, all sold out. So you start to look at this stuff too, and even me, even I will get the fear of missing out, right? Because I've been looking at that hammerhead for a while. Well, at some point, there's going to be a run on them, and then they're all going to be gone. Because look at these all say sold out. And swordfish. Or sold. Nope, you can get that green dial swordfish. You can still get that one. And that's titanium. But the rest of them all sold out. Oops. I did not mean to do that. Aurora. So I have one of these. Um, these are all sold out. And there's the mosaic. So I have the mosaic right here. If you look over here, I know it's 
a small screen, but I have the Mosaic right here. Very cool watch. And that is sold out, and that was only $549. So it's around $500. They're gone. They're sold out. You can't get them. They're not going to make another one. That's not what they do. So it gets kind of entered into a category uh, uh, developing this mindset of affordable but rare. These are more money here, but they're still all sold out. All right, let's go back to that hammerhead. Maybe I should buy that. I reached out to them to see if they wanted to work with Random Rob, you know, for a video, but I haven't heard back from them. So if any anybody over at Zelos is watching my videos, I want that watch. Talk to me. All right, let me read some comments. I know I ignored you guys. Rock the watch says, get them while you can. Yeah, and this is a case of legit, you know, we talk about fear of missing out and it's usually a, in a negative light, but the reality is sometimes fear of missing out is, is kind of like a, a, a legit thing and uh, you need to act on it if you really want to experience that watch. So, th so then it brings up another thing, you know, with some of these watches, you know, can you buy that for five twenty nine? dollars How much value does it hold? Like, what does it do on the secondary market? So say you buy it based on fear of missing out, but then you go, well, I need to move it because I want to try something else. Are you going to get your money back on it? You're probably going to take a hit, but probably not much if they're sold out. You can probably do okay with it, I would think. I don't know. I haven't really tracked the Zelos used market. Yeah, Todd, I'm with you on that. I'm actually surprised that the Meteorite Down one hasn't sold out. And not only is it not sold out, but like, see how the red one says eight pieces remaining? And I know my buddy Jack, if he chimes in, I know he ordered one of the red ones. That's a very cool looking dial, the hammered red. But I just, I want that Meteorite Dial with the blue framed indices. That's the one I want. Right there. Just one of them. I just want one. Uh, let's see. YZ80 says, I, I think I paid $749 for my ETA hammerhead. That was back when you could get it with the ETA movement in it. And got it and got $525 for it. So he took a hit on it. Um, but, you know, how long ago did you do that? Because, like, if you were to try to do that today that watch might actually fetch what you paid for it. I don't know. It could be wrong. AZ Taz fan says, actually, it's on my no sell list. I bought a proper NH38 movement and had it professionally installed to get rid of it. Pull on the crown. Uh, I think he's responding to somebody else. Uh, Luke says, I should buy it live. Um, I don't know if it shares my info, though. And I, so I'm a, I'm Quite frankly, I'm stretched a little thin with buying the two G-Shocks this last weekend plus the travel. Um, and I also just ordered um, all of the parts for my 80,000 subscriber giveaway too, which is a, like a, a master screwdriver kit from Bergeon. The, um, a time grapher like the one I have, the Bergeon work mat, and the uh, Bergeon 7767 spring bar tool. So... Uh, that was like almost $600 in parts or tools. So that plus buying all those G-Shock and everything. I got I got to like cool my jets a little bit. Plus I've been buying like car parts plus like been buying like pistols and, and I, I got to cool it a little bit. So uh, let's see. I have a anonymous watch guy says he has a copper dial speared fish. Only Zelos i have probably not going to sell. That's cool. Uh, let's see, Pale Horse is checking in. You can pop a large number in item you want. It'll pop up the actual number. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a little trick you can play. Mitch Maddox said you can basically kind of do the checkout thing and then just rack it up um, to see how many are left. Yeah, I don't really care to do that. New watch. Oh, and I bought a set of tire and wheels, Kevin, actually, too. I, I ordered um, 
a set of Koenig wheels and uh, Michelin Pilot, whatever, four S4s or four S's or something like that. Uh, oh, okay. I guess I can show it. Let's go back to the screen. I can do the screen. So where's the, I don't think it matters, but so this is, this is the one I just showed you. It's the Smith and Wesson five, seven and it, yeah, it does have a threaded barrel. Um, and yes, I am in the process of working on getting a suppressor. So it, it fires a, um, a really weird looking round, but it's a, uh, gas blowback system on that on that pistol because uh it's it's a very light recoil system it's not like a traditional pistol and its function and stuff so uh, let's see matt from rock the watch says sold his orange sunburst hammerhead should have kept that one yeah uh yes um it's expensive but it's not terrible terrible it's basically a dollar a round so um, I've, I've been slowly stocking up on that too. I mean, cause that's just the way it goes. Cause I haven't even went and, um, fired it or anything, but it uses like this crazy looking, almost like a miniature rifle round. It holds like 22 rounds. So, um, okay. That's some good advice. YZ80 says, uh, figure on seven months for the suppressor. Well, I mean, I've waited this long, so whatever. And I'm going to do one that'll use... Basically, the first one I'm going to get will work with the 5.7, the 223, and and then I can obviously fire 22 long rifle through it too. So that covers like quite a few platforms that I already have, and then I'll and then I'll slowly work on getting a uh, nine millimeter setup. Dane says he's owned over 100 Zelos and sold about half that I own to fund buying others. That's like fine tuning your collection. That kind of makes sense. Let's see, Jason is checking in from Aruba. Um, let's see, let's read this. Matt says, would you consider the Zimbi Thailand Seiko releases as affordable when not? Absolutely, Matt. That is 100% another really good one. Um, I only have one of the Zimbi, and it's not mine, it's my wife's. I showed it to her and she liked it and she kept it. So that's upstairs. I don't, I didn't bring it down here. But yeah, when you can buy them at retail, um, yeah, that is definitely a really good one to uh, put into that category. Just like, uh, I mean, I hate to step away too much, but like um, some of these Seikos, like this Seiko Rowing Blazer, like when you bought this one at retail, it's like four ninety five or something, right? And now these sell for like seven hundred plus on eBay. So that's a really good one. Um, believe it or not, some of these NTHs. You know, when they get discontinued and stuff, those are hard to get. Here's an, uh, that other Zelos. Um, hell, the SKX. I mean, it's been a while in the making, but the SKX was under $200 back in the day. Um, then there's weird ones. Not weird, I guess, but like this this Islander, you would never think an Islander watch, right? But this Islander, Port Jefferson, unless he restocks it, this thing's out of stock and the demand is high for it. People want this white dial one. I think he's restocking it. Um, Maritak from Countycom, this guy, not very expensive. But when they're gone, they're gone. That's it. You can't get this one anymore except for the secondary market. Vero, Workhorse, Hooligan. I don't know how many they made of these. I forget, but not a lot. They're hard to find. Um, and then there's like this weird one. Wolves of Odin. I show this watch. I've toured this watch. Everybody loves this watch. And you can't get it. It's it's just crazy, right? Some of the earlier Dorenzo releases in different dial colors, gone. Can't get them. He may or may, you know, Sergio may or may not release it again. Uh, Anonymous Watch Guy says Trosca as well. Yes, Trosca has some really good releases. <laughs> Werewolves of London. That's funny. Uh, Wol Wolves. I already forgot what the heck it's called. He messed me up. 
Oh, yeah, there's another good one. Second hour of gin. Clear diver watch. Yeah, those are hard to find. So part of that is because these micro brands, when they release their watches, even if they're not limited edition watches, they're inherently limited edition watches because they do smaller batches. And Jason, no, Dorenzos aren't hard to get, but like what I was showing you is once he once they move on to another run, so if it's like a version two or version three, then you you can't really get the old colors. They're gone. They're sold out. That's what I mean. Oh, David, thank you. Wolves of Odin. AZ says he paid 165 for his SKX009 back in the day. Yep. Tennessee Mike says this one. Yeah. The um, Momentum C Quartz. The Tom Selleck in um, Magnum PI watch. They just, they only do like little releases at a time. So they're, they're kind of, they're super affordable. But they're, once they're gone, they're gone. Paul says Oak and Oscar, Olmstead, no more available. Really? That's not really affordable though. The Oak and Oscars are kind of more exp expensive. So maybe I'm going to like put them in a like same kind of scenario, but they're in a higher classification because they're over a thousand dollars. Kevin says the Smiths on the secondary are more expensive. There are some micro brands that do that as well. Ah, there you go, right there is heads up. Guys, get ready. Momentum C Quartz re release tomorrow. Get ready to get on the uh, pre order on that. Yeah, and then here's another option too. Von Krul says, I'd build an SKX from Namoki mods and crystal time parts. Wouldn't care if it's not genuine. Say, I agree with you. If you actually want one and you could build it probably better than the original one for a, less than what it costs to source, you know, a good clean one. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's see. Skurfa's treasure seeker. Yeah. Like, and then certain dial colors, but like pretty much all of them, but I have the yellow one. I had to get this one off eBay. I just waited on eBay. I paid extra for it. I think I paid five something for it. It just is what it is. Uh, what is this one? Jeremy says, how about the Seiko SRPJ? Let me look that up. Was a, did you buy it new or used? It's RPJ 43. Let's take a look, shall we? Uh, no, add this. There we go. You guys ever do this chat? Who, who do you think that is? Let's chat. Um, who do you think is chatting? Aren't they closed? Why would they have a live chat when they're closed? It can't be somebody in their store. Sorry, I can't help myself. So this watch here. Yeah, those are... Yeah, those are super cool. And it's 490, but it's out of stock, right? So oh, you think if someone in the staff gets a I wonder who it'll be. <laughs> I'll do a live chat with them. Yeah, that makes sense that the live chat comes up all the time, but like if they're busy doing something, I mean, I guess they're in sales and they it's an opportunity to potentially make a sale. But if they see my name come up, then they're going to be like, what are you doing? Uh, Nate Fletcher checking in. Thanks for joining us. 
Uh, you know, I haven't talked to Nick in a while. He's everybody at that store is crazy, crazy busy. Well, we'll just we'll leave it open and see if somebody pops up. But we'll go. We can go back to other. Uh, we can go look at some other one. They can farm it out. Didn't they were going out of with a new watch? It's awesome when Notice opens their vault. Okay, yeah, the Notice vault right here. Uh, let me let me go back to this screen. Is that that's a full screen? There, that's better. Um, this is a Notice vault edition right here. So, and it's a one of one. What, did they write it on the back? They don't. I think they write it on a piece of paper when they give it to you. But this is a Notice Vault edition that I had specced out with Wes and Cullen, and they built it for me, so it's pretty cool. Um, what is this? Jason says, I'd rather ban myself from my channel than remo review that. In reference to what? Oh, you hate that Seiko? Those are cool. What are you talking about? Jason, you're out of your mind. You just, like, you were right here. You were, like, cool status right here with me. But, like, you hate that Seiko. You, like, you moved right down there. You're still really cool. But, like, you, you were super cool. Now you're just, like, kind of cool. You could redeem yourself. I know. You got a lot of cool uh, content with G-Shocks and everything. So, Dorenzo... DRZ is cool. Mimo had a notice sector the other day. Oh, that is cool. That Mimo is willing to take on like micro brands in his barn find. That's awesome. Um, I don't know. Let's go check out. Let's go check out Mimo. No one's going to respond from Exquisite. They don't want my money. Close the chat. It was not helpful. Uh, let's go here. Let's go Mimo. Mimo jewelry. Uh, nope. Barn fine watches. Okay. Uh, what 2100 did I get? Um, let's, I think I can show it. I don't know what the number is on it. But it's got that touch of, it's a GW 2100 CB. But it's got that touch of Tiffany blue in there. So real quick on the uh, 2100s, I learned because I talked to a lot of the factory reps for or regional reps at, uh, yeah, Jason, don't, don't try to align yourself with what Dane is saying. Like, because I, I will just group both you guys together and just, you guys will slowly be moving down the cool factor peg. Like it's, it is what it is like. Um, oh, G-Shock. I learned a lot about G-Shock and Seiko, a bunch of things, and I can share some things, but I can't share all the things. But I will say this. There will be a 2100 MRG. We're going to see a G-Shock 2100 MRG. So that is actually going to happen. As crazy as that is. All right, so let's check out check out Mimo's barn find watches. As it says, yes. So he's got a Frederic Constant. He's got a Ubo. I still really want this Hamilton. I'm actually going to message. Hold on. I'm going to text Mimo right now. I'm going to text him. Hold on. I'm on, I'm on my phone. Hold on a second. Mimo, can you send me that barn find titanium Hamilton for video? Okay, I'm, I have to get that Hamilton khaki titanium in for video. That thing is too cool. This This one right here, this is the one I'm talking about. I can't stop looking at it. And it's great too. You can see it's a little scratched up and everything. That's that's how I think like a titanium watch that looks like this, that's it should have those marks on it. I really like it. Uh, 
Could we get Mimo on a live chat? We, yeah, we probably could. He'd be down. Oh, Mimo read my chat. He's he's either going to say, uh, no, get lost. I need to sell it. <laughs> or he's going to say, like, sure, whatever. Uh, well, he's got a Laurier on here for only $365. That's pretty good. He's got a really nice looking ball watch. Uh, Mimo said, sure, we'll send it tomorrow with the new Presage GMT. So he's going to send me a new Presage GMT and he's going to send me the, um, the, that Hamilton. Okay. These are sold out. Hamilton, Seiko's, G-Shock, Bulova. Yeah, those are all sold out. Yeah, so it might have been toppers or something. Um, Raven Watches is another one, but he, he doesn't archive. So, like, I have that one that Greg gave me, this guy. I forget what it's called. The Trekker 39, this guy. But you can't see. That's what I like about Zelos website. You can't see on this one. You can't see the old models. So, kind of bummer. I do like that watch too. I do really like that one. Okay, let's go back to this screen and um, what is Dane saying here? Yes, killing turtles was fun. I kind of like the turtles. I, I am digging the turtles. Oh, uh, okay. So you guys, you, now you, I see what you're doing. You're trying to get up in that cool, that super cool. You know what? If you guys want to work together, I'll kill a turtle. Like we can go turtle hunting right now. Let's go to Seiko's website. Or no, we forget about Seiko's website. We need to find, if I'm going to kill a turtle, we need to find a rare turtle. Um, let's see, what is this? What do you think about the Cincinnati Watch Company? I was able to meet with those guys at, or the one guy there, I forget his name, um, at Palmer's Jewelry in Kokomo. And um, they got some cool watches. My favorite one is still the field one. Let me bring it up. Uh, let me bring it up here. Cincinnati Watches. Let's go back. Let's share the screen. So this one right now, that one's pretty cool. That one's, uh, let's see, Greg just sent me a link. He, mu he must have had a link to Raven where I could see the old ones. So the, the Cincinnati Field Watch is still my favorite. The Pilot's really cool, and they got some new stuff coming out. The Concourse is, you know, not going to be for everybody. But this one, hands down, is pretty universal good. Uh, yeah, Kevin says the uh, Cincinnatus. Um, I have this black one with the gill out on tour right now, but this maroon dial one looks really good. So uh, I, I would say this this is a good watch to buy if you're on the fence with it, or if you think you want to get one. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Um, just purchased my first far and sweat. Oh, you picked up a far and fair, fair and sweat. I keep saying far and sweat. It's fair and sweat. Um, I just shipped out. I have two fair and sweats out on tour right now, so I can't even show you one. Um, but I have more of those, that brand coming in. Uh, let's see here. Oaken Oscar. Oaken Oscar is a little bit more money. Let's see. Tuxedo Manor says, Rob, do you still have the Seiko turtle given to you by the Seiko employee? That was a really cool shade of blue on the dial. Yes, I do. I don't know where it's. It's right here. It is right here. Yep. Now I have it. You see, I don't have it on fitted end links, but it still works really good. Uh, let's see, Oaken Oscar versus Cincinnati. Well, Oaken, they're different quality levels, but there's diminishing returns when you start talking about that stuff. So, uh, what is this? How about that new gray Laco Pilot? Mm, I don't know. Let's. Sh 
check it out. Is it a gray dial? Is it under this one? There's too many darn watches. How do I know which one it is? I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, basic? Is it under basic? So they have those ones. I, I do like those. This is probably still my favorite looking one from Laco. I like that one personally. But I don't think you can... They still... Oh, that's not the one I'm thinking of. I was thinking of the one with the uh, California dial. So they made another one without a California dial, I see. Uh, no, not all pilot watches are huge. I think I know which one you're talking about with the gray dial, but I don't know who's got it. Somebody special might have it. Um, let's, so let's hide that. Um, I want to look at this one, Walbrook, because this is a company um, that I was looking at already. And then Brave Sailor actually picked up the limited edition one. Because there's Walbrook, there's Douglas, and then I think there's one more company. These things are pretty cool. Let me uh, hide this. Can I hide that? Let's hide that. Go back here. See, Brave Sailor picked up the World Timer one. But see, I want to I want to see this orange one. See, it's on Instagram. All right, here's all the watches. So this one right here, I believe, yeah, this one is the one that Brave Sailor picked up, is the X15. Very cool looking watch. I think he's digging it. Oh, yeah, he says in the chat he has no plans to flip it. It comes with a special case back on this one. It's only 500 bucks. I think he even got a little bit off on that when he went to the show to get it. Uh, but I don't know that they were getting too big of a discount, but I know he did get a little bit off. Okay, all right, can we go back? Yeah. Do they have the orange? Oh, you can get the orange one for three fifty four. New special offer. It's only three fifty four. What a bargain! What assembled in France, so you know it's good. Like a Renault, right? They're known for their reliability. Uh, what movement is in that thing? Oh, uh, why am I looking at orange? You guys don't like orange. You like the green? That's still a special offer. It's 443. That is cool looking. A dark green. You can go two-tone. Jason's off to go edit some more. That's right. Get back to work. The uh, kind of light green one is sold out. They're they're good fun watches. Oh, there we go. Four or five on bracelet. I would want it on bracelet. <laughs> Greg just texted me. He said he owned a Renault Le Car. Listen, I had some of the best fun in a car in a Renault. Uh, it even said, even like the marketing back in the day said the one to watch. Man, we took that thing down some icy roads and just pulled the e-brake and spun it around and bounced it off the snowbanks. It was no problem. Yeah, I would totally rock this watch. It's only uh, pre-order. Oh, wait. That's rock the watch saying. I can't take that. All right. Is there any other watches? What are we looking at here? Miota 9015. The bracelet is a bit sharp. It ain't bad. I think it's a good looking watch. Looks like a Breitling. Ooh. Definitely is not a Breitling, that's for sure. But yeah, I can see what you're saying. The, the tone of the orange and everything, it looks good. 
Let's see. Greg sent me a picture of that one. The picture doesn't look as, oh, it's pretty good. It's got the blue indices. Orange is the, the way to wrap it. No, that's what everyone says. Everybody says I like orange watches, so I just kind of roll with it. Kind of forced into it. I like one orange watch. Now I have, like, I'm tied to all these orange watches. Damasco, let's look at this one. Damasco 39 millimeter grade owl. Not Super affordable, but I am a, a Damasco fanboy. So um, who's the company that sells that? Is it, it's not watch buys. Who sells Damasco? I can't think. I wasn't going to go to Damasco though. I was going to go to the U.S. sales. Watch Max. Uh Watch Max doesn't work with anybody, though. Who's the... Oh, you know what? Those Russells? I know they're up in Canada, but Russell Jewelry carries Damasco. And they've worked with me in the past. They're not working with me right now, but... I thought it was pretty cool that they worked with me, so... Um, let's see. Oh, Mark at Island Watch sells Damasco. That's a... Uh, Oh, that one sold out. Is that the 39 you're looking at? We might have to go to... Let's go to Long Island Watch. Because Mark's cool. Don't need that. Shop by brand. Damasco. Thirty-nine millimeter. That's not on bracelet, but that's okay. And he says ready to ship, like he's got it in stock. You can always get the bracelet later. You don't really save much when you buy it with it. I don't understand the pairing with that strap because there's no other orange on the watch. If it had an orange seconds hand or something, uh, Fedora John is asking if Mark is sending me. Yeah, um, you know what? I'll text Mark tomorrow. I'm not going to text him this late. I'll text him tomorrow and just ask him how he's doing on that. But I don't think he's going to have a hard time selling those or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's a good looking watch. A thousand bucks. And it this has the new movement in it, right? Yeah, DS30. So it has the. Uh, oh, no, it says Swiss ETA. I thought they were switching over to their. All their in-house movements. Chief says the Laco Gray is nicer, in my opinion. Does he? Does Mark sell Laco? He does. Oh dang! You're right. That is a pretty good-looking watch. <laughs> it's like half the price. Um, it's. I guarantee you, it's not as nice. The Damasco is going to feel more like rugged, more sturdy. It's going to be. Um, like nicer, but again, diminishing returns. This thing's half the price and it's not half the watch. It's definitely a nice watch. So if you're looking for a 39 millimeter Flieger, that would be hard to beat for sure. And you can get it with a bracelet. I don't think I'd wear a Flieger on a bracelet personally. I would wear it on the leather and movement. Now, some people are going to dog on the movement. I think it's dumb to dog on the new 8 series, 8000 series from Miota because it still hacks and hand winds because they've updated them. Um, it's just, you know, it's like comparing a 4R to a 6R. They both do the same darn thing. They might have a little bit different power reserve or something like that, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, the, the steel on the Damasco is going to be way better and everything like that. So that's uh, that's a pretty cool watch. Limited edition. That orange is pretty crazy if you're looking for one for Halloween. What other brands does he carry? I haven't looked at Long or uh, an Island Watch in, or Long Island Watch in a while. But you know what's not called? It's called Island Watch. Okay, Adapt. 
or ADPT, Axios Bertucci, Photo Damasco. What is Dave Berghold watches? I see, I don't even know what I don't know. Those are pretty cool looking. Um, out of stock, they're not cheap. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to another one. Formax, Hemel, Islander Watch, Laco, Lejour. Marathon, NTH, Ocean Crawler, Orient, Phobos, Protex, Seiko Watches. Seiko, what is Seiko Advanced? Just the next tier, okay. Squally. There was somebody at the um, Watches Whiskey and Wheels that was wearing, I forgot his name already. I'm so bad with names. He was wearing a super cool looking Squale, and he had it on a Stingray strap. I got to get me one of those Stingray straps. What the heck Squale was it though, man? That thing was like, it was a really good looking model. It was a 1521, but the colors on it were great. I, you know what? It might be like discontinued or something. Because I don't see it. And that strap, it must be aftermarket too. Because I don't think Squale offered that strap. Yeah, it was it was such a good looking watch. Makes me want to pick up another 1521. They're, they're so good. And that looked so perfect on that Stingray strap. He paired it up really good. All right, where are we at? He is carrying the former Luminox CEO's guy, new brand, Triton. Yeah, uh, Mitch Maddock. He's carrying that, and I think um, um, John from Watch Gauge is carrying it too, the ProTech. Uh, JP says his name was Jack. Was it seriously Jack? I think I would have remembered that. That's my dad's name. I have a 60th anniversary 1521 and love it. I might have to pick up a 1521 soon. Urban Gentry bought his first Squale from Mark, or so the legend goes. That makes sense. That's probably how their friendship kind of kicked off. Um, and, oh, JP says, no, just the whiskey. Well, either way. Stella, Felix, dress blue is hard to find. Yeah, some some of those when as soon as they get like out of their cycle, even if they're not like discontinued or limited edition or anything like that, as soon as they get out of their cycle, it's gone. But all right, we're at forty eight minutes. I'm already getting tired. All right, what are we gonna talk about? Oh, I was talking about Urban Gentry. And did you guys know that? Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter to you. But like Mark. Uh, that owns Island Watch, he's like the he's like the U.S. he's like the main U.S. guy or whatever for Squale or something like that. I forget how it works. Um, yeah, the TGV has its own Squale edition. Yeah, if I'm gonna get a Squale, it's gonna be the 1521. I mean, the 1545 is really cool too. But the 1521, definitely unique case, great looking. Um, doesn't doesn't Exquisite carry Squally too though? I think they do. Uh, any other watches? What else do I have there? I put a Genoa on the table. But yeah, the crown is a pain in the butt on the 1521 for sure. The uh, the the Genoa is like a, over a thousand bucks, so it doesn't really meet that. Same thing with I put the um, if we go back over here, I put I put these two over here again. There, it's kind of a stretch. The Zodiac Pro Divers with the full loom bezels because they're not making any more pros with the full loom bezels. They lost their supplier or the the guy that was making them passed away or something. So uh, those are going to be difficult to get. Prices will probably start to go up on them, on the uh, pro divers. 
Yeah, Floridian says Exquisite does carry Squally. It's what I thought. They also carry uh, Unimatic. Like, I have this limited edition. That's the other thing. I love one of ones. I love limited editions. I have this. Uh, it's actually an Exquisite Timepiece exclusive. Um, there's only 100 of them made with Unimatic. So that's... I like stuff like that. Is it worth more? No, not initially. But as soon as... If... <laughs> If they're sold out and you can't get them anymore and then people want them, then maybe it's worth more or at least what you paid. Yeah, some brew watches go pretty quick. There's Jack's watches. We were talking about earlier, Jack, about picking up the uh, red dialed Zelos. Uh, oh, yeah. Oops. Hold on. Tennessee Mike says these guys right here. As weird as it is, yeah, the Moon Swatch. This is the from the Moonshine series. So this was the full moon release for May that was only in Vegas. Super rare, super hard to get. It's the pink moon. So it has a little bit of pink up there in the chronograph hand. And then I put it on a perpetual straps, FKM rubber strap. Um, they still have the blue Unimatic at Exquisite. Last time I looked, we can we can go look. Let's go look. Exquisite time pieces, brands. I need to start sleeping more. I think. Um, let's see here. Let's go. The screen. And then we can hide that. Oh, we got someone waving at us again. Uh, just browsing. So they have these green ones. They have the blue ones. I'm digging the Unimatics, but if you're going to get the Diver, I know it's tempting to go with the more affordable, like the $500 one. And there's nothing wrong with that one. It has the Seiko movement in it. But it's going to be on the thicker side. Like this one I got is is still pretty thick. I don't think it's overly thick, but let me measure it. Yeah, it's 13.3. It's thinner than a Seiko SKX. It's 13.3 mil, but that has the Salita in it. So if you get the one with the Salita in it or the Swiss movement, it's going to be closer to $1,000. Um, but it's it's just thinner. It's more wearable. 750,000. Is this one got the Salita in it? For 750? Where's the movement? No, see, that's got the Seiko in it. I think you pretty much have to go to the. Oh, I lost the. I lost the site. Um. Yeah, that well, these are all these blue ones say they're limited. But if you go to the one with the dive bezel, it's a thousand bucks and it's gonna have the it's only a 40 mil case. Yeah, and it has the Salita in it. So it's gonna be thinner. It's gonna be like mine, it's gonna be 13.3 mil thick. So um yeah, Mitch, what are you talking about? Whatever happened to your relationship with prestige? So I've I've I work with Exquisite and I work with um, Saltman's and then of course I work with Mimo and I work with Mark at Long Island and uh, and then all the micro brands and all that stuff. So so we have a super chat from Mr. Brave Sailor. Thanks for the two doll hairs. He says, "Take a look at the Tissot Citerol. Is that what it is?" Um, who do I know that carries Tissot? Does I don't know if they're gonna have it, but I think the Sultan's carry so I think. Yeah, I think they do. But they probably don't have it on their website yet. Yeah, they're I don't think they're super quick to add it to their website. Alright, let's just go to Tissot watches. 
Rhythm and Citeral. Okay, super cool looking watch. I think we touched base on this last week as well. Prestige, exquisite, same the same thing, right? Um, just under a thousand bucks. Let me reach out to Saltzman's and see if they're getting one of these. It's got the Powermatic AD in it. It's a great looking watch. You know, at first glance, I was gravitating towards that yellow one, but the more I look at it, I don't know. That blue one might be the way to go. Because I think that blue with the green and the red on the on the little thing here, register, I think that just works a little bit better. What do you guys think? Should I see if I could get the blue? I guess I'm not going to be too picky, whichever one I can get. I think it's a good looking watch. Ooh. Is that what it looks like when it looms up? That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Okay. Um, Paul says Baltic. Brave Sailor likes the yellow one. Let's look at the yellow one real quick. Does it have that loom shot too? Oh, it's got purple loom on it. That reminds me of my instrument cluster back on my Mark IV GTI. It lit up that color right there. Yeah, I think I'd have to go with the yellow one just because of that alone. If it actually, if the yellow actually looms purple, then my mind would be blown. So I would definitely have to check out that one. Yeah, I think I'm going yellow. I'll see if I can get the yellow one in. Um, Predict on Joma Shop in a year 50% off, says Tennessee Mike. Um, probably, probably, wait, yellow for sure. Probably correct, Tennessee Mike. Uh, let's see, we've got another super chat. Jack watches an EDC, which he has a YouTube channel that he never post up anymore on. Just calling you out, you could post up some vids. Uh, says, I'm, well, first of all, thanks for the $10 here, super chat. Says, I'm going to purchase 35 millimeter PRR. X Powermatic as soon as I can find the blue in stock. Um, I could probably help you with that, Jack, but it's funny you bring that up because I was listening to on my drive back on Saturday. I was listening to the Two Broke Watch Snobs podcast, and the last one they posted, they talked quite a bit because they were talking about integrated bracelets, integrated bracelet watches. And they were talking about the they do wear a little bit bigger than you would think because of the bracelet. However, personally, I'm a fanboy because um, I've owned the PRX. And I think I've owned some other ones. I like the Dorenzo. I'm a Dorenzo fanboy when it comes to the integrated bracelet. I think they nailed it. I think it, it wears really good on wrist. But the 35 will still wear a little bit bigger, right? So it's still going to be a good watch at the, the, the 35 if you can find it. So it's pretty good. Um, what are you guys talking about? Uh, Two-minute warning, keep her under 90. Rob says, uh, Dr. Bob. Oh, oh, you're talking about the speed. I did. I kept it, um, for the most part, under 90. I, but there were sections, like, if the speed limit's 75, I'll do over 80. It's, that's fine. There's nothing, wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, ah, here we go. There's another one to look at. I forgot about that. The Christopher Ward 12... You can get that in 36 millimeter. I might reach out. I've been avoiding working with Christopher Ward just because they're a marketing company. If they're listening or watching to this, I'll say it to your face. You guys are terrible. I have said it to your face in San Francisco. And then you've changed, you know, whoever works with you. But I'll reach out to Alex at Ideal. Uh, that is their marketing company for Christopher Ward and see if I can get one of those CW12s. In because that does look like a really good watch. I think that would be another. I think 
I think what maybe myself and a few other of us, a few other, a few others are getting at with Jack is that if you get that PRX, you'd probably end up selling it. It probably wouldn't resonate with you as much. Um, I think you could get the Durenzo or the Christopher Ward. Maybe if you can get a deal on it, anonymous watch guy says he thinks it's overpriced in his opinion. I don't know. I, I don't know that it's overpriced. It might be more money than we want to pay for it, but it is a pretty cool looking watch. Um, I don't see myself rushing out to buy it. So it's hard to argue that, you know, I might agree with you, I guess, on that. But well, there's that too. Von Krul says Christopher Ward didn't do a hardness coating on the titanium. Also, I'm not crazy about the dials. I'm with you on that too. I don't really care for the texture dial on that one. If it had a different dial system, but that's where I just come back to the Durenzo. I just like the Durenzo and he's got some other really cool colors. That's the one I would go with. Um, Nevada, Greg. Tennessee, Mike, I've been emailing. Let, let's, all right, we're past an hour. So whatever I say right now doesn't count. Um, I've been emailing Nevada Gretchen. They've sent me according to tracking numbers, at least three different watches that have never made it to me. They get hung up in customs and they get sent back. So I don't know if the same thing's happening when people buy a watch from Nevada, but I, I'm convinced at this point that you cannot get a watch from them. Um, there's a few other companies that I have a similar issue with as well. And the marketing company with Christopher Ward, terrible. So we're over an hour now, so I can just let it fly. Kevin says he has a six and a quarter inch wrist, so 35 to 36 millimeter is perfect. I, I agree that is the perfect size watch for your wrist. Um, what is the ceramic sub looking diver on the far back right? Far back right. It is a DLC coated Unimatic. So very plain-ish with a pop of orange on there. It's a limited edition, exquisite timepiece collaboration. Uh, ask TGV how he gets. I, don't, I mean, I guess if, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't get it. I had a Nevada Gretchen get hung up in Tennessee. Finally got it. Pain in the butt. Yeah, and it shouldn't be. It just really shouldn't be a problem. Um, any hints on what Seiko's, I, all right, I'm going to give you a hint. Whatever I say right now, I can't be held liable for. So I'm just going to give you a hint. I'm not saying anything. Okay. I'm not saying anything. I'm just giving you a hint. Okay. That's it. That's all I'm giving you a hint on. That's just one of many. Um, and like I said, here's another hint with G-Shock. So imagine 2100 MRG. That's just a hint. I already said it earlier, but. Uh, yeah. I... So I was shown some things and I was told I can't take a picture of it. And as I was being told I couldn't take a picture of it, I was taking a picture of it. So I have pictures of these things, but I can't share them with you. But I did show uh, anonymous watch guy, <laughs> but he didn't get a picture of it. He just looked at it. So hello everyone. Just bought a Casio from Mimo. And Dwight, I'm sending you your watches. They're going out finally today. Dwight built those custom mod ones and he said he just picked up a, uh, uh, Casio, when it, like something like this from Mimo. So Mimo is great to deal with. I think you'll be happy. Kevin says he knows things. Yes, Kevin knows things. Um, Y'all love the upcoming Zelos. Oh, here we go. Dane's usually got the inside, inside track with Zelos, so we pay attention to Dane a little bit. Y'all are going to love the upcoming Zelos releases. There's some great stuff coming. Going to blow folks away at. Dane, you might try to share some of those with me. I really like that. Oh, Rob's secret Seiko picks. I can't share them, though. That What car is that in that picture? Is that a Mustang? 
think it's a Mustang. That's a good looking Mustang. Uh, Mitch Maddox says he's got the all metal 2100. Anyone here about the Oris Pro Pilot X Animal Edition in orange dial? Uh, are you just kidding, Dr. Bob's? And I love your new uh, icon, the Jolt Cola. Um, I feel like you're kidding because of the Kermit thing, but the animal in or orange dial, you're messing with me. You're messing with me. There's no way that's real. I feel like you're just messing with me. What's the one to the far right with the steel bracelet on its side? Far right steel bracelet on the side. This is probably this one. That's the Genoa Silent Service. Uh, kind of a wait list for it, but still, I think, worth it. It's Everybody that has them loves them, and I agree. It's actually a really nice watch. I should probably wear it more. So... Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. You were just getting me. Dr. Bob's made it up. Because I might have been down with that. There we go. YZ80 says, Jolt, all the sugar, twice the caffeine. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Let's, uh, I think Loom shows up on that. So let me kill the lights. Let's kill that. Let's kill this. So we can close out with a Loom shot. There we go. So we can see some Loom. On the, there we go. We can see Lumon watches, and I'm in the background. So thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys on the next vid.